Hey, welcome everybody to our Thursday. You can't make this up Thursday. And uh, let's roll. Man, I am excited to be here with you guys. I'm checking both YouTube and the app. We're also live, I believe, on Facebook and a bunch of other places too. Uh, so we're going to have a great time today. So uh, what do you say we just roll? And by the way, um, it looks like everything is back to normal. I know we have some challenges with uh, uh, some of the videos early on in this week until yesterday. And uh, looking forward to just being back to normal now. And uh, can't wait for Sunday night to be able to pick it up. Actually, Sunday morning. be teaching a message on the Passover this Sunday morning. Uh, and, uh, and Sunday night, going to be back in the book of Daniel with a prophecy update from Daniel. Uh, looking forward to all of those things. And uh, what do you say we get rolling? So here we go. Check this out. Ready? Again, this is, you can't make this up. But here it is. Martha Stewart slammed for using part of an iceberg as cocktail garnish amid climate crises. Martha, the ice caps are melting. Don't put them in your drink, one Instagram user wrote. Ah, oh, this is just hilarious. Uh, Martha Stewart's new iceberg flaunting Instagram post generated some titanic pushback from fans. How awful, oh my. After the 82-year-old shared a few vacation photos showing they're using pieces of an iceberg from Greenland to cool down a cocktail. The businesswoman and TV personality received pointed criticism among an ongoing climate, global climate crisis. It's the end of the world. I mean, this stuff is just insane. These people are absolutely, they're nuts. They're, they're completely nuts. I mean, a little ice cube. I mean, oh my gosh, you're going to kill everyone, Martha. Oh, so, so, I mean, regardless of what you think about Martha Stewart, I think, uh, I, I, I say, hey, kudos to her. I think it's kind of hilarious. But I mean, it's just amazing. I'm telling you, people have lost their minds. Uh, a little piece of ice. Wow. What's wrong with people? Okay, let's move on from there to this one from The Hill. TV news crew in Chicago. Chicago robbed at gunpoint while reporting on robberies. No, you can't make this up. You can't make that up about Martha Stewart using a little piece of ice in her drink. You're killing the planet to this. A television news crew was robbed at gunpoint this week in Chicago while reporting from the scene on a spate of robberies that took place across the city in recent days. A reporter, a reporter and cameraman for Spanish language station Univision Chicago were reporting from Chicago's West Side early on Monday when they were accosted at gunpoint by three armed men wearing ski masks. The men allegedly demanded money and stole some personal belongings before they fled the scene, a police told local media outlets. I mean, you look at this and you go, I remember when this, a very similar thing happened in San Francisco, I think about a year or two ago, the reporting, and there it is, the robbery right there while they're live. And you look at this and go, no, this is the world that we live in. Martha Stewart, you terrible person, and you, you and your iceberg ice cube, how evil could you be? <laughs> and, then, and now this, I mean, this is great, but this is what happens when you have these radical Marxist policies, because that's what these are that are running these big cities in the gun-free zone of, the, the gun-safe-free zone of Chicago, which has, I think, more murders than anywhere else on the planet. Um, I mean, you look, you know, people complain about the cartel in Mexico. All you got to do is look at Los Angeles, look at Chicago, look at New York City, you look at these and go, oh, man, that's way worse. All right, I'm going to show you a video. Now, check this out. I think this, 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 is, this, this is going to be encouraging if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. And if you're not, I think you're also going to be encouraged by it. If you think that the stuff that we are witnessing out there right now is just totally insane. There's a punk rocker, and he's got a few things to share. So check out this video. It's uh, pretty cool, actually. I remember when I was growing up, I was like a mega punk rocker, and I was just super anti-establishment, super anti-system, oppression, stupid laws telling me how to think, how to live my life, people trying to dictate what I do, you know. It's like super punk rock when I was a kid. Like I had a whole mohawk, it's like a foot tall for like most of my teenage years, you know. I grew up in New York, and you know, I realized it's kind of funny. You can't really be a punk rocker and be a liberal anymore, because that has become the establishment. 
So if you want to be a punk rocker, you by definition have to be a conservative. It's the weirdest thing. And like, you know, I know you're probably going to get all mad and try to defend your point. Like, oh, well, they're Christians. Like, that just makes you the bigot, strangely enough. So uh, good on all you Christians for being real punk rockers while the world has gone ultra establishment, ultra oppression, ultra government overreach. So, uh, yeah, you can't be big government and be a punk rocker. That makes no sense at all. So that's, this is, there's a shout out to all you globalists out there. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll see how long it lasts. So I would say very well said, and I can read some of your comments, and, uh, and uh, I see uh, you guys are agreeing with me. Most of you are. A uh, few complaints, but I get complaints on everything. So, uh, but I mean, check this out. I mean, just look at that and think, uh, this is just crazy, the stuff that's going on out there. Check this out. Remember, this is, you can't make this up Thursday. Here it is. Ready? This post was on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, from Peter Sweden. He has, it says, can't make this up. Remember how they forced us to use paper straws because they were environmentally friendly? Turns out they contain harmful PFAS forever chemicals. Not to mention that they taste disgusting and get all soggy. Raise your hand if you agree paper saw straws suck. So there you go. I just read the, I just read the post for you. Um, I mean, you look at that, and, and I did discover this. As much as I like the state of Texas, the great state of Texas, went out to eat somewhere, and they gave us paper straws wrapped in plastic. And I thought, that makes sense. Let's get rid of plastic. Paper, let's wrap paper straws in plastic, and the paper's going to be good for you. Now they're reporting paper's not good for you. Remember when they had to get rid of paper bags, the brown bags at grocery stores? And now I'm starting to see brown bags are coming back in grocery stores. That was like that was like 100 years ago. Remember that? you got to be old, old like me to remember brown bags at grocery stores. Then, then they came out the plastic bags. Then here in California, you got to pay for a plastic bag. And then you just, and that's going to fix the environment. No, it's just, it's just made everything that much worse. But that's the way the insanity is here. All right, check this out. Children's Hospital Director claims infinite genders. Trans kids can Get this, identify as Tootsie Roll Pops. This is the children's hospital director, infinite genders. I'm a Tootsie Roll Pop. These, I'm telling you, these people got mental disorders. These adults doing this stuff, and they want kids to have this, these dysphorias and these disorders. The feminist director of the UCSF Benoff Children's Hospital claim Tootsie Roll gender kids are part of the new gender wars. I mean, I, I mean seriously. A California director, oh, figures, this is California. A director of gender clinic, a medical school professor, claimed their infinite genders for decades. Dr. Diane Ehrensaft has been one of the most prominent voices pushing gender ideology in the medical and psychology field. She is a director of mental health mental health and chief psychologist at the University of California, San Francisco. Wow. She's also a professor at UCSF School of Medicine. Th this, is, this is nuts. Mental health, the director, chief psychologist at the university, and a professor at the School of Medicine? These are the people that we're supposed to trust with our health and our mental health? It's a Tootsie Pop. I mean, these people are completely, they've lost their minds. They're the definition of what Paul wrote, Romans chapter 1, where God says they're so, they've rejected him to the point where he gives them over to a reprobate or debased mind, ultimately meaning they'll make decisions that are so bad, they won't even recognize they just de they, they harm themselves. But they're willing to make the decision because of their hatred. They're given over to lies. They reject the truth. Second uh, Timothy chapter four. Paul writes in the last days, they will not endure sound doctrine, meaning 
they will not put up with the truth. So they're given over to a reprobate mind, and hence, this is the kind of insanity uh, that we have. Uh, the, make gun laws so Chicago can, they can kill each other, but they have the safest gun laws in the world, at least in the United States. And then, of course, the other big cities, and then you have the robbery I talked about. Martha Stewart, how dare you drink? Uh, you take a piece of ice from an iceberg. You are such an evil lady for doing that. I mean, you look at the insanity of these people. Then, this is good. And by the way, you can find links for all of these things in the description, but check this out. Uh, this is George Carlin. Remember George Carlin? I can't read every word he says because he uses a few curse words. Uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say everything in here that I can say I think you'll agree with me. So it is from Goodreads. You can check out the link. It's right there in your, in your description. He said, we're so self-important. Everybody's going to save something now. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save the snails. And the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. Save the planet. We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. I'm tired of this bleep. I'm tired of bleeping Earth Day. I'm tired of these self-righteous environmentalists, these white liberals who think the only thing wrong with this country is that there aren't enough bicycle paths. I mean, this is great. So again, it's in the link, so you gotta read it for yourself. People trying to make the world safe for Volvos. Besides, environmentalists don't give a bleep about the planet. Uh, not in the abstract, they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might have just personally been inconvenienced. A narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me, he says. The planet has been through a lot worse than us. Been through earthquakes, volcanoes, plate tectonics, continental drift, solar flares, sunspots, magnetic storms, the magnet magnetic reversal of the poles, Hundreds of thousands of years of bombardment by comets and asteroids and meteors, worldwide floods, tidal waves, worldwide fires, erosion, cosmic rays, recurring ice ages, and we think some plastic bags and some aluminum cans are going to make a difference. The planet isn't going anywhere. We are. I love that. The planet's not going anywhere. We are. In fact, going back to the book of Genesis, what's God say? Everything I've created is going to continue just as it is until he says it's game over during the tribulation period and you look at the bold judgments that are coming on the planet. And then we get the millennial kingdom and there's a complete remake over after the millennial kingdom is completed. And I, I like how he says that, the planet isn't going anywhere. So those people who hate Mar Martha Stewart, no matter how you feel about Martha Stewart, listen, I got opinions, but I think the whole thing's hilarious. The way people go off on that and, and the other things, just the absurd things that we're seeing. The planet's not going anywhere. We are. Listen, we are. We're all going to die. And then according to the Bible, guess what's going to happen? We're, we're going to stand before the Lord. It's appointed to man once to die and then face the judgment for those who know him and trust him for the forgiveness of their sins and those who have not. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Check it out. We're going away, he continued. Pack your bleep, folks. We are going away. He's, he's right about that. And we won't leave much of a trace either. Isn't that the truth? Not just physically, uh, but in our lives. Uh, you, know, you look at your life and you go, okay, how much of an impact do we make? So turn it in spiritually. Listen, leave everything you can, uh, build everything you can here for the Lord Jesus Christ because that's the only thing going with you, right? We, we know that. So let me do what I can for the kingdom of Christ right now, knowing that when I leave this planet, listen, my physical market's going to be gone. People aren't going to care about me in 100 years uh, or, or, or whatever. I remember many years ago, about 30 years ago, I was working for a title insurance company. I missed something. It was a forgery. I used to check for forgeries and stuff, but I missed a forgery. Ended up costing the company over $100,000. And uh, I moped around for about a week. And then finally, one of my bosses came up to me and he said, just, would you stop moping and get back to work? He goes, a hundred years from now, who's even going to remember that you did this, let alone remember you? And I thought, that's a good point. Snapped me out of my mopiness and realized 
I need to just move forward. And I look at this with George Carlin, certainly not a Christian that I know of, but he says, uh, we're going away. Pack your stuff. We're going away, and we won't leave much of a trace either. Maybe a little styrofoam, he says. Uh, the planet will still be here, and we'll be long gone. Just another failed mutation, just another closed end biological mistake. Of course, he's obviously not talking as a believer, uh, but you get the rest of it. Uh, an evolutionary cul-de-sac. Uh, the planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas. The planet will be here for a long, long, long time after we're gone, and it will heal itself, it will cleanse itself, because that's what it does. It's a self-correcting system. The air and the water will recover, the earth will be renewed, and if it's true that plastic is not degradable, uh, well, the planet will simply incorporate plastic into a new paradigm, the earth plus plastic. The earth doesn't share our prejudice toward plastic. Plastic came out of the earth, the earth probably sees plastic as just another one of its children. <laughs> uh, could be the only reason the earth allowed us to be spawned from it in the first place. It wanted plastic for itself. Uh, didn't know how to make it, needed us. Could be the answer to our age-old egocentric philosophical question, why are we here? <laughs> then he says a few other words I can't say. Listen, obviously he's not going a spiritual direction or a biblical direction, but you get the point. The absurdity of the, the uh, climate alarmists, and, and we're being lied to. Listen, we're being, what are we not being lied to, right, about? Uh, we have another you-know-what that's on the way that I can't mention everywhere today. I talked about it yesterday because we were on the app with the um, exclusive content over there. Um, and then we know what else do we have to worry about? Cyber attacks, um, the, the end of the economy, um, fires everywhere, hurricanes, tornadoes everywhere, um, climate, we're, we're causing all the climate problems, and then of course, UFOs, right? Gotta, these aliens, they're gonna get us, and well, if they come, well, they might not get us, they're gonna be really smart, we just need to shut up and obey uh, whatever's, whatever's going on there. And this is what I think about the aliens, you heard me say this before, I think what we're hearing about is demonic for the most part, but I'm gonna put them into three categories. This is what they are. They're not aliens from another planet. This is what they are. Uh, either we're experiencing the demonic influence right now, or number two, there's aircraft that's created by men, by the military, and we don't, aren't privy to those things in the public, but they're created, and the technology is way beyond what we've been told. So we have that, which is probably the case with some of the things. So we have uh, aircraft that's been created, whatever you want to call them, that we're not privy to yet, that can do all kinds of crazy things because of physics and things that have been figured out with technology and science. Two, demonic, or three, uh, some of these stories are just made up. They're, they're absolutely not true and they're made up, and they're, the, the, so the whole thing. And then I, I do believe that there's a narrative that's being shaped to use the UFOs as an explanation for all kinds of things, from the rapture to why we need to believe these people from other planets, because they're far advanced from us and uh, above us and so forth. Listen, remember the words of Jesus, Matthew chapter 24, don't let anybody deceive you, right? For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. Don't let anybody deceive you. By the way, I'm not sure if you guys heard about this or not. Pablo and I are going to talk about it tonight on his channel, if you can check that out. His channel TV, I'll be with Pablo Frasini. In 2025, apparently, for all of you living in Australia, um, in 2025, no more gas cars, is that right? They're saying it's the end of these petroleum-based cars in 2025. How are they going to do it? They're not going to allow financing anymore on them. Think of, this is nuts. This is nuts. Um, remember, remember the story a, a few weeks back where there's now 14 U.S. cities that are part of, this, that are part of the C40 cities. They're saying by 2030 their, their desire is that there be uh, zero dairy, zero meat, and I guess zero gas cars or something like that by 2030. So it puts us out seven years. 
Um, this has been reported all over the place, and now they're saying, no, it's fake news. We, we never said that. In fact, I, I even got fact check on that. Listen, the, 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 they're liars. They say these things. They're seeing how far they can push the envelope, which I think is going on with some things right now to see if there's enough resistance. Listen, with the latest things happening right now, you got to resist. We got to stand up. We got to do what's right. And if you fall for this nonsense a second time, shame on you. Don't fall for it. They're going to try and bully you. The Howard Stearns are going to come back on TV again, back on Sirius Radio or whatever. They're going to start bullying away again, saying, you're killing everybody by not getting the boop, boop. It's your fault. You can see it all happening again, right? So don't fall for it. Be strong. Remember you were lied to before. Remember all the lies. Remember all the things that they said. Do you know that still people like me are not allowed to present facts on certain channels. Still, still not allowed to do it, or you're uh, you're shut down. Amazing. Why is that? How much longer will we be able to tell the truth about climate, right? And the lies that are going on there. It, it, and you look, you go. They're gonna listen. They're gonna use every single thing they can to manipulate the masses with fear. You look at what's going on in Maui and you still wonder, are we ever going to get the truth? I don't think so. There's so many suspicious things going on over there. And think of oh, the, the missing children, how many people are dead, how many people were trapped. I mean, you look at so many things that took place over there in Maui. It's pretty evil. It's wicked. Would people actually do something like that in, in a destroy intentionally all those people and all those homes and everything else well they have throughout history and what i'm seeing right now is we have some of the most wicked people living right now that have ever lived on this planet and there's been some pretty bad people in history but we celebrate them as celebrities and they're the people that are in the know they're the ones who are running the countries well they're part of what's his name's uh, klaus schwab young global leaders of course we can trust them well, they're on TV. Of course, we can trust them. They're evil people, folks. Evil people. Check this out. This is what needs to happen. We need to resist. Check this out. Mom sues attorney for housing gender-confused daughter with males who sexually assaulted her. This is what needs to be done. These people need to be stood up to like this mom. Michelle Blair's lawsuit describes a horrific chain of events in which her gender-confused daughter was threatened by teen boys the school staff advised she share a restroom with and sexually assaulted by males her public defender pushed for her to be housed with. The lawsuit, listen, you have to, you have to go after this stuff. We, you, listen, we, we can't put up with any of this nonsense. This is evil. It's wicked. We can't comply with this. And remember, in Romans chapter 1, what happens? God says at the very end of Romans chapter 1, what happens? I'll read it to you. He talks about the different personalities of the people. It's where he talks about being given over to a, a reprobate or debased mind. Uh, three different times he says, I'll give them over. Men line with men, women line with women. And then he lists all the different characteristics. He says they're filled with unrighteousness, sexual immorality, perversion, uh, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, this is Romans chapter 1 at the end of it, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, but not only do the same, but also those who approve of those who practice them. So what God is saying is, listen, judgment is coming for all this wickedness. He says, not only are those going to be judged who practice them, but those who approve of them, those who vote for these things, those who agree with them. Listen, don't put up with this. We need to push back. We need to stand up. We need to do what's right. We need to be involved. If you've got to do something like that, then we need to do something like that. Listen, here's this story. This is from last week. It's worth an honorable mention again. But remember this from last time? 
liberal Democrat wants gang members to only shoot between certain hours. Remember, it's just this is just an honorable mention. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. This is really bad. This is really bad. Uh, Democrats are the party of bad ideas. Republicans are the party of no ideas. But here it is. This is just total insanity. In Chicago, which is where I just read the other story from earlier, right? Again, this is honorable mention from last week because it's just so insane. Um, Alder woman, Maria Haddon, is promoting a proposal from a group called the Native Sons asking gang members to restrict their shooting to between the hours of 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Can anyone see gang members following these rules? Seriously, can't you just picture a gang leader addressing his crew? Hold it, boys, just relax. It's not 9 p.m. yet. Can't shoot anybody. It's only 8.59. Can't, oh, wait. Oh, it's 9 a.m. Everybody, okay, everybody shut down. Let's go back home. I mean, the, the, the insanity of this world. Listen, we need to stand up for what is right and, um, and uh, push for truth and righteousness. Uh, listen, um, it's been great talking with you guys today. Uh, I, I, I look at, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm looking at both uh, the app right now and also on YouTube. And, and I want to say this, one of the ways, I'll get to taking your questions again come this uh, upcoming week. Um, but I want to say this, the, the only way that um, these messages really get out there anymore is through subscribing, notifications, and shares. And it's free and also likes, they matter. They matter with the algorithms, the sharing. Um, and because we just don't, uh, some of the things that we talk about, myself and some of my colleagues and friends, uh, they're not really liked out there in the general public with the people that are running, the, the, the media giants, if you know what I mean. So really the only way to get it out there anymore is to like and share and uh, subscribe. And you do those things. It's free to do all of those things. I want to ask you to uh, join us in that way, being able to get the word out for all the different videos that we do, uh, to be able to share them. Uh, listen, thank you for joining me. I'll be live again. Looking forward to it. Uh, Friday uh, with Don Stewart. I had a great, been having a great time with Don Stewart um, on uh, all of the things that we are doing there with our new channel. Um, why do you believe that? Our new program. Why do you believe that? Helping to answer your questions. Listen. Christians need to know why they believe what they believe and how to defend their faith. So that's why we have this new program on Fridays. It is absolutely fantastic. It helps a Christian to be well-informed when it comes to the Bible. And also, if you have questions, if for the person who's not a believer, it helps them to go there and say, okay, did Jesus really exist? How do I know Jesus really existed? Can I really trust the Bible? Who wrote the four Gospels? Um, why are these people the writers of the Gospels? How do you, I know I can trust the, word, the, the Old Testament? Uh, what about the Trinity? What about the Holy Spirit? Uh, why do people say Jesus is the Word of God? What is the Word of God? So many different questions that we are answering. What about science in the Bible? And uh, we're going through these every Friday, and uh, they're just great. You can watch them anytime, and uh, hope that you do join us for those also. God bless you guys. Looking forward to being live with you on Sunday, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. See ya.